We use tables to organize information, and we can use a table to organize the information that we get from a food chain or a food web. In this table, we'll record whether each organism is a producer, a consumer, or a decomposer. So food chains always start with a producer, and kelp is our producer. The kelp crab is consuming the kelp. So because of that, the kelp crab is a consumer. The kelp crab itself is consumed by the squid. So the squid is also a consumer. The squid is consumed by the penguin, and the penguin is consumed by the orca. So the kelp is our producer, and all of the other animals in this food chain are consumers, and that's very common. It may look weird to have consumer almost all the way down the table, but it's very common to only show the consumers in a food chain and to not necessarily put a decomposer into a food chain. So don't be thrown off by that. You don't always have to have a decomposer in your food chain or food web. You will have them in the ecosystem, we just don't always put them in our food chains or webs. But if we did put a decomposer into our food chain, what would it look like? So here you can see that we have included a decomposer in our food chain, but we're asking what is it? What would go there? So if we saw a decomposer at the end, what would it be? So remember that bacteria and fungi are the decomposers in most ecosystems. So don't just assume that the last organism in a food chain is a decomposer. That's not always true like we just saw. Only when you see an actual decomposer, bacteria or fungi, should you then put decomposer as the role of that organism in a table. In this table, we'll be collecting information about the food sources for each type of animal. And it's important that you remember that the arrows point from the producer to the consumer or from the prey to the predator. So we'll be looking at the arrows that are pointing toward each type of animal. So birds consume spiders and insects. Snakes consume mice and squirrels. Spiders consume insects. Mice consume grass, walnuts, and insects. Squirrels consume walnuts. And insects consume grass. So you can see that filling out a table of food sources is really simple. You're just looking at each organism one at a time and paying attention to which arrows are pointing toward that organism. We can also use a table of food sources to fill out a food web. Now you may have noticed on the previous table or maybe in this table that our producers are only in the food sources column. That's because, first of all, they're not animals, so they wouldn't be in the type of animal column, but they also don't get food like animals. They get their energy from the sun. So it is important to understand that you're only gonna see producers in the food source column on a table of food sources. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this table to fill out our food web. So we see that insects consume oak trees, so the arrow will point from the oak tree to the insects. We see that skunks consume insects, mice, and squirrels. Once again, notice those arrows are pointing toward the skunks. Squirrels consume the oak tree. Hawks consume the skunks, mice, and squirrels. And mice consume insects and the oak tree. And so you can see that we were able to add all of our arrows pretty simply just by looking at our table of food sources. We can also use a table of food sources to create a food chain from scratch. But it's very important to understand that food chains always start with producers. And we're only going to find our producers in the food sources column. So we need to start by picking a producer 
that we find in this food sources column. So let's start by picking grasses. So next in our food chain, we just need to find an organism that consumes grasses. And because we're making this from scratch, there's going to be more than one correct answer. But for now, let's just pick prairie dogs because prairie dogs consume grasses. So next, we need to find an organism that eats prairie dogs. So I can see that ferrets, coyotes, and hawks all consume prairie dogs. So I could pick any one of those. So let's pick coyotes. Now I could have chosen ferrets or hawks too, but I'm making this from scratch, so I'm gonna pick coyote because coyotes consume prairie dogs. Now let's add one more organism to our food chain and we're gonna add one that's a little bit of a trick. Next, we're going to put turkey vulture. So why is this a trick? Well, notice that turkey vultures eat decomposing animals. I don't see the word coyote in the food sources for turkey vultures. So it's important that when you look at a food source table, you really understand what it's telling you. Turkey vultures, they'll eat any dead animal they can find. So they'll fly around and they would eat a dead coyote if they could find one. They eat decomposing animals. And so when I see that, you have to understand that any animal that's decomposing would be a food source for the turkey vulture. So the turkey vulture isn't hunting and killing the coyote, it's eating a dead coyote that it's found. But that could still make it a correct answer as the next spot in this food chain. So you can see that we could have made several different food chains, but this is a food chain that works. It starts with a producer and grasses are consumed by prairie dogs, prairie dogs are consumed by coyotes, and dead coyotes would be consumed by turkey vultures. So here is a practice question with food sources and food chains. And it asks, based on the information in the table below, which of the following food chains shows one way energy flows through this ecosystem? So we just got done making a food chain from scratch from our table of food sources, but it's also important that you can use a table of food sources to check to make sure that a food chain has been made correctly. Now, one very important fact about food chains is that they always start with a producer. So we can look through our answer choices and really quickly scratch out anything that doesn't start with a producer. So A starts with wildflowers, that's a producer. B starts with a California condor, that's a huge bird. So that cannot be a right answer. C starts with blackberries and D starts with grasses. So those other answer choices start with producers, but I can scratch out B right away. So now we just use this table to check and see if what the food chain says is correct. So A says that wildflowers are consumed by American black bears. So I can see that American black bears consume California mule deer and blackberries. Wildflowers are not a food source for the American black bear in this table. So that tells me that answer choice A is not correct. Answer choice C says that blackberries are consumed by California mule deer. So I can see that California mule deer do in fact eat blackberries. So that part of this food chain is correct. It also says that California mule deer are consumed by cougars. And I can see that cougars do in fact consume California mule deer. So answer choice C does seem to be correct but let's check answer choice D just to be sure. So answer D starts off by saying that grasses are consumed by cougars. And I can see that cougars consume sheep and California mule deer. Cougars do not have grasses as a food source. So that means D is not correct. And we were right, C is our answer. And that's how you use a table of food sources to check food chains. So I hope this video has helped you understand how tables, food chains, and food webs all go together. Keep up the great work, and I'll see you next time.